Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Sporting Global podcast. And today we're diving into the esports world with Sheng. And Sheng, welcome to the podcast. It's a pleasure having you here, and we're excited to learn more about you and about the esport industry. Welcome, welcome to the podcast, Sheng. Yeah, hello, Ole. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Shen. Uh, just as the Ole introduction, and now working in esports area in China. Um, I'm now working in the Jiangsu Esports Association. Jiangsu is the name of my hometown province in China. Right. I'm working as the secretary of the membership promotion department and the volunteer department. Now this is nice. my current job. Nice. And and today we have a very interesting topic, Shane. We're going to talk about you know the international esports fan and what what makes them unique. You know, it's a very interesting topic. Uh, you know, we're going to dive. You know, what is an esports fan and all this stuff. But before before we do that, I would like yeah. to you know invite everyone here that are listening to the podcast to sign up at the Sporting Global Summit. Uh, we're having three a three split series at this time of the podcast. We already had the one happening in America, but we're, there's coming one as well for. Asia Pacific, where Shang here is going to be one of the speakers sharing his knowledge and expertise. And the topic, is, the topic is, of course, you know, within the esports world. But for the summit itself, it's about data and the future of sports. So make sure to go to the link in the bio, sign up, and learn from key leaders, key professionals in the industry that will share their knowledge with you, and get you inspired, and motivated for everything that is coming, you know, in, in the next, next few months, years, you know, of the sport industry. So Shane, let's, let's yeah. dive right into like, you know, what is an, uh, what is an e-sport fan? What, what is that? What makes them different from regular sports fans? Well, in e-sports fans, because, uh, currently there is a, not a, uh, exact, uh, explanation or definition of esports fan. So everyone right. has its uh, has uh, has its own explanation. But in China, right. uh, uh, we uh, we describe uh, uh, we describe the esports fans in a broad sense and in a narrow sense. Okay. In a broad sense, esports fans refer to individuals uh, who worship. Or supports an esports players, an esports title, an right. esports game, yep. or an esports club. This is uh, something si very similar to the traditional sports fan, right? Right. right. And then, it's, uh, in a narrow sense, the esports fan refers to individuals who watch or participate in esports events, right? Uh, including right. professional or non-professional events, or frequently yep. they play yep. esports game itself. So this right. is a uh, this is uh, the difference of the broad sense and the narrow sense. Yeah. So and uh, mm -hmm. so, what we, what makes them different though from from regular sports fans? Is there any difference at all, or like how do you how do you separate that? Uh, for me, there are uh, there are some typical difference between the traditional sports fan and esports fans. All right. Uh, the first one I think is the. Uh, the difference of the audience and the participant. Yeah. Uh, in, in traditional sports fans, uh, I believe, uh, at my own experience, uh, I have uh, living and working and study experience in China, in South, uh, in South America, and in Europe. Yeah. As my yep. personal experience, in all the world, at least the world that had that I lived before, right. Uh, yeah. The traditional sports participants. Most of them, nearly one hundred, maybe one hundred percent of them, yeah, yeah. Are, are traditional sports audience. I can't imagine right. a football a, a guy or a girl who play football don't I never watch a, a football game or have their own football player idol. Right. They say, right. It, yeah. it, it's hard to imagine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but for a, but for esports fans. Uh, I think esports fan is more actionist. They are more participants. Right. So, so in esports industry, they are more uh, players only than viewer only. Right. So a lot. Right. Of, that, that means a lot of esports fan. They only play games. They never watch esports. Uh, if uh, esports match professional right. esports match. Right. Yeah. Huh. It's interesting. This is the first big difference. 
But there's a lot of and potential the, and, for sure. Like mm-hmm. I think by with the players, a uh, player base in in uh, esports in terms of like becoming viewers of uh, and fans of the industry itself. But yeah, mm-hmm. keep keep going in terms of like what other differences you see. Yeah. Okay. And the second biggest uh, difference I think between the traditional sports fan and esports fan is their age. Right. Their age. Yeah. Uh, according to a to an investigation directed by the Nielsen Company, very famous investigation company, yep. they say that in the worldwide, uh, the average age of the esports gamers is twenty four years old. Wow, twenty four years old, very young generation. Very. Most of them grow. Most that means that uh, most of the uh, current esports gamers are Generation Z. Generation right. Z. Right. Yeah. And then for the traditional sports, uh, uh, I'm I just take the the the, the U.S. professional sports uh, league, the, the four biggest uh, sure. uh, professional sure. sports league in in, in North America: yep. the NBA, NHL, NFL, and MLB. Yeah. Yep. According to my knowledge, I think the, the NBA, the NBA fans, their age, the average age is the youngest. Among the four biggest, right. is thirty nine years old, the average age of the NBA fans. Yeah, yeah. And for the oldest, it's the MLB. Yeah, the right. average age of MLB fans is fifty five years old. Wow, that's pre- that's pretty old yeah. though. So this is a huge dif- the huge difference between the age. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then also the tw- the average uh, the average. Age of 24 years old of esports fan means all of them, all of the esports fans, are potential consumer in the future. Right. The 24 years old, and you, you can imagine that most of them are still the uh, still the university student or recently yeah. graduated. Yeah. Maybe they are they just get their first salary in the, in their life, and they want right. to. And they, you know, you, uh, when I was when I was a re, uh, new graduated student. I right. earn my first salary. I want to be a huge consumer. I want to, <laughs> right. yes, I want to yeah. use all my money to buy all the, all the products that I want. Yeah. Right, right. So this young generation, this generation Z, have a huge potential of 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 consuming. Right. No, for sure. And it, it's yeah. a very good point what you bring up too. I think um, you know the esports fan uh, by being so young as well, like um, you kind of like you feel much more part of like, I mean, like the players that you see, like they're your age, they might even be younger. Like if you also look at the player base, like a lot of the people that are yeah. like, you know, professionals, they're, they're so young, you know, like I feel, yeah, so, I feel so old in the mm-hmm. esports world, you know, yeah, sort no. of like, and I'm just 28, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm older. Yeah, but, but, the <laughs> e- but I believe in, if you participate in esports industry, even you are an relatively elder, you yeah, feel right. you feel younger because you always contact with the younger generation. So that's a, another important reason that I decide to change my career <laughs> because I want to live younger. Yeah, right, right. No, it's, yeah. a, it's a good one. Um, mm-hmm. So so let's let's talk a little bit about um, you know the difference between Asian and European or American esports fan because I feel like yeah. uh, you know obviously Europeans are probably the ones that are a little bit uh, you know, the last development when it comes to esports in general. Obviously, like Asia has been like you know very pronounced factor for like the esport industry alongside with like you know the U.S. That's that's essentially where I explored it. Like you know back in 2015, 2016 when I studied in the U.S. and I was like, if you were like talking so much about esports, you had like already professional teams and like you know been mm-hmm. established for a long time. And I was like, whoa, what what is this world? You know that I'm not really aware of in Norway. So. So, like, is there any dif- like, is there any difference between like Asian and European or American fans? I mean, like, esports fans, of course. Um, what have you What have you figured out there in terms of your research and your expertise? Mm. Well, the European and American esports fans, and uh, compare with uh, Asian, uh, East yeah. Asian, East Asia, yeah, East Asian, Asia, Asia, yeah. yeah. I think the uh, the difference is general. It's general because uh, for the 
culture influence, history influence, right. and technique influence. Yeah. But I, uh, I will make some, uh, I, will, uh, I will mention some, some factors. For right. example, first, uh, is the eSport title difference. Uh, eSport title is the eSports game difference. That means the, the, the favorite eSports game in East Asia and in Europe and uh, North America is quite right. different. Yeah. Yeah, That's a good point. in North in North America and in Europe, uh, I know that for for these gamers, good gamers in Europe and in North America, their their New Year video game package is normally three contents: gum, drive, and ball. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's a good gum. One. Gum, yeah. the first person shooting game, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like CS:GO, uh, and Drive, Call of Duty, Halo. Uh, Overwatch, something like that. Right. And the drive this is the Need for Speed series, the GTA. Yeah. 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 And the ball, the FIFA, uh, right. 2K series. Yeah. 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 This is the uh, the main uh, esports titles that the European and FIFA, uh, that uh, that the European and the North America North America gamers play. And I right. also I know uh, you come from Norway, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you come from Norway, right? Yeah. I know the. Uh, Norway countries are strong in Counter Strike, right? There are yeah, huge we're, amounts, we're, we're, there are huge number of esports uh, e uh, Counter Strike players come from the uh, North uh, North Europe North European country, right? Yeah, I mean, like I was a little bit surprised when I started like you know digging into the research, but I figured out we had a couple really good good players, like especially in CS:GO, like we had like Face Face Rain. Um, and, and and stuff like that, but but we also have like you know some really good ones in um, in uh, in Fortnite, you know, which is sort of like one of the ones that have been you know blowing up, you know the the most most yeah. recent. But but I mean like that that's quite interesting. Like for us, we're always like we're such a small country, so it's funny to see like how even in Norway we can you know bring up some really good players in in esports as well. So that's fun. But uh, but yeah, how's 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 sort of like the, um, like what kind of games is it that the the East East Asia, um, you know, players and fans are like, you know, looking into that are different from you know what you're seeing so far in U.S. Mm -hmm. and and Europe. Yeah, um, just as I mentioned, the the, fav the favorite esports title in Europe and this, uh, North America is uh, Gum Drive and Ball. But yeah. these three titles, two of them don't have the. Uh, don't have a good environment to, to for promotion in East Asia. The mm. first one, the gun, you know, it's about the political correctness. The, right. in, uh, in East Asia country, in China, yeah. in South Korea, it's not permitted to have private gun. Mm. So also uh, for the government, they believe that the 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 game content related with gun or shooting yeah. is yeah. Uh, kind of violence. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, Government is not, is not is not happy to promote this kind of game. Right. right? Yeah. Gun is not a, it's not a, not available. Yeah. And then yeah. for the for the ball and yeah, uh, in South of, uh, in South Korea I uh, I'm not sure but in China I think we don't we still don't have a very deep uh, uh, sports environment mm. traditional sports environment yeah. because for the uh, the uh, the, uh, the the progress of the professional sports uh, in China just began from the uh, 1990s. Right, it's, it's 30 years. It's That's compared pretty, with pretty young. Young, yeah, pretty young. It's the new. Uh, I believe it's a newborn baby compared to the Europe and the North America. It's oh, more, sure. yeah, it's already sure. more than more than 100 years. Yeah. So yeah. in China, we we uh, we don't have a deep sports environment. So. Right. For the sports series or esports game is quite difficult to yep. for promotion. Yep. Yeah, and also the drive. Driving is also a part of sports we can consider. Right. It. So for, sure. for these for these three favorite titles, esports titles uh, from in, in Europe and South America, it's impossible. It's yep. impossible All right. to be top level esports title in in East Asia. And so. Uh, the is so now right now the right. esports in esports is the most uh, the favorite esports title is a mobile server. It's a mobile game. Mm. Uh, 
ya mau bagian the interesting uh, in the first uh, in beginning from the 2010s so it's about right. Dota and Dota 2 and right, right. now it's about League of Legends League of Legends yeah, so yeah. why is this MOBA game a MOBA game is uh, the hottest game in in Asia I believe it's about the we need to talk about the group and social nature uh, mm. of yeah. esports activity of esports activity good point um, Uh, as uh, here is uh, here, I will use uh, uh, a phrase uh, uh, by the former CEO of e- ESL Asia, uh, Mr. Sebastian Radu, sure. who made the pre- presentation of esports uh, during my master courses. Oh, I nice! Respect him a lot. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, he said, the Asian market, especially China, Japan, and South Korea. Share common cultural values and behavior patterns. Unlike the more individualist-centered uh, cultures such as the U.S. or Europe, for Asian, right. the group cohesion and harmony is extremely valuable. Right. This is his word, and um, totally agree with that. So the MOBA, you know, you MOBA, you need to play with uh, other players like a team. Right. So right. in China and South uh, and South Korea, we. we We ha- we give great value for the teamwork. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. For the teamwork, we can even sacrifice our personal interests. Right. So yeah. This yeah, is the yeah. this is the value heritage from our past, from our history. Right. So I think this is a, the uh, the why the MOBA the right, right now League of Legends and yep. also yep. in in China another uh, MOBA. Uh, Another mobile game, King of Glory. You can consider yeah. it as the, the the mobile phone version, uh, League of Legend. Right. These are the hottest uh, esports titles in China right now. Right. Uh, so- League of Legend is the second, and the uh, King of Glory is the first. Looking into the future, the beginner faces a choice that leads him to the triumph, or not. Being surrounded by like-minded professionals can be the best guarantee that you actually take that crucial career step. Sport in Global is a digital network for sports jobs. It gives you the chance to be involved in the sports industry, no matter who you are, regardless of gender, nationality, and experience. Our AI system matches up talent with human resources. Candidates who align with the company's values and needs immediately get shortlisted. It saves time for HR and increases the opportunities available to applicants. The platform identifies tailor-made recommendations based on user needs, so you're always aware of the possibilities out there right now. Sport in Global is a place where students gain key tips about jobs and build the valuable connections that are essential for people at the beginning of their career path. The path from candidate to champion starts with a single step in the right direction. Sign up to Sport in Global. Sport in Global, the best way to enter the sports industry. So, so let's talk a little bit about um, you know King of Glory, which I mean, mm-hmm. I like, I read your your article and and stuff like that, and you mentioned sort of like how. Like the game King of Glory surpassed League of League of Legends in popularity, you know. Which I mean, like League of Legends has been like you know massive game that has spread across, you know, all, all, also you know to the U.S. Uh, as mm-hmm. well. Not as much Europe, I think, but especially in the U.S. in terms of like the esport industry, because there's a lot of money involved with it in terms of competition. Yeah. But like, whoa, whoa, why do you think like a game like King of Glory, which is like a mobile uh, game? Surpass such a such a popular game. Like, wh- what do you what do you think? Like, what? Why is that the case? You know. Mm-hmm. And for the King Glory is the uh, mobile game developed by the Tencent, the same company of the uh, the producer of the uh, League of Legends. They, All right. Yeah. So they already. Yeah. yeah right. By Tencent. Yeah, that makes Tencent sense. The, yeah, the giant in the giant company in China. Yeah, and for the mob, uh, for this King of Glory, now it's the hottest game in, in China. I uh, I believe uh, the game the game was uh, the game is pronounced in 2016, I think 2015 hmm. or 2016. Pretty new though. Pretty uh, new. Yeah, early early, early for uh, for a mobile game. Right. But already five years. But right now it's still the hottest 
esports title, esports wow. title in China. So it's quite a miracle. Yeah, I think this miracle is made by multiple reasons. First, I would right. talk. Uh, first is the game content. Yeah, game content. Yep. Yeah, the uh, the mobile the the mobile game. You know, they say each play uh, each gamers need to select their 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 characters in the games and then mm. use this char- you know, control the character to play. Right. And in League of Legend, the characters are created by fiction. They are oh. not. Re- they are not reality. They are ah, not reality. They're created by by the writers, by the by the authors, right? Uh, by the designers. Yeah. So but it's in more the, personalized. In a yeah, sense. personalized. Right. But in King of Glories, most characters uh, are created according to a uh, according to a true existed uh, historical character. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay. They're historical. They are historical persons in history. Uh, most of them come from China, also and right. others, uh, others uh, character from the other country. For example, the King Authors, yeah, or yeah, yeah. The, the famous Japanese samurai, the Miyamoto Musashi. Wow. They are also the historical persons from the yeah. other countries. Yeah. So uh, for some gamers, yeah, they even use the King of Glory to uh, to be the the bridge that uh, uh, that helps them know the history. Yeah, no, they play that games, sense, you know. And yeah. yeah, they play games, and they know the character, they and they, yeah. they are interested. What is the the what is the true story of these historical right. persons in their lives? So, so, so they begin to read their read the historical story, history story. Yeah, so, but so it's almost a little bit like you know. I mean, like I'm not gonna like go full on because I don't know King of Glory, you know, hundred percent. But but mm-hmm. it reminds me a little bit about like sort of like. Assassin's Creed, you know, in a sense of like this, the the history that they implement in all their games mm-hmm. of like sharing like real facts, you know, as, mm-hmm. as much as they can about like yeah. history, so they can learn as mm-hmm. well. And that that is yeah. like a huge component. Yeah. So from this game, we can know that the game can even be a platform for the culture and historic promotion. So right. this is a great value of the esports. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the, also about the game is the control control it's uh, the king of glory uh, among all the uh, famous mobile games in in the market right it's the easiest one to control mm, yeah that's, that's a huge factor yeah yeah we can uh, we use uh, in in esports industry we always use the action per minute the APM yeah, yeah. to yeah. Um, uh, to decide the uh, if a game is easy or hard to control, for right. example, uh, we talk about StarCraft. The, the normally the average APM of a East uh, of a normal StarCraft gamer is uh, 150. For yep. Dota, it's 130. For League of Legends, is 100. T to to 80. So right. less APM means easier to play. Right. Right. Makes yeah. sense. So the so the easy access, um, uh, the low level to study, make right. the make the King of Glory more popular, yeah. and also attract a huge amount of female players. Female yeah. players. Uh, let's yeah. Talk a little bit about that though, uh, because I mean, mm-hmm. like, like obviously, and this is something that is very interesting, right? Because mm-hmm. and I mean, like, I'm not gonna, you know, you will go into this, uh, you know, the numbers and everything, but. But apparently, you know, you, you saw like there's a huge interest among female esports fans uh, in mm-hmm. Asian market, um, and like in comparison to like Europe and the U.S. And like, what what essentially have the East Asian market done, you know, to create a broader interest for women? I mean, like to get them more, you know, into the game because it's it's like it feels like it's some sort of barrier there. So it, it, it's kind of interesting when I read that, and I was like, whoa, okay, that's great, you know, and what can Almost like Europe and 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 North America learned from it, you know. But but let's let's hear mm-hmm. why. <laughs> what what have the East Asian uh, esport industry done to like uh, mm-hmm. get, get more 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 female participation and interest? Yeah, well, just as I mentioned, yes, uh, let's talk about the difference between the Europe and the South America uh, with with East Asia. I right. mentioned the group and social nature, right? Of the East Asian people and also, uh, and among the, the genders, between the genders, 
normally females consider more sociability of games than the males. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, we 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 need to recognize this. Uh, female consider more uh, the opinion from others than the males. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And for the, um, I still use uh, King of Glory as a as an example as an example. Sure. And the King of Glory, you can imagine. 52% of the King of Glory gamers are female. Wow. This is very rare. More, more female gamers than male gamers in a game, in, a hot, in one of the hottest esports titles in China. Crazy. That's yeah. great. That's great. That's great. And among these female gamers, 80 of them, or 80 of them, uh, King of Glory is the first mobile game that they play. That oh. They play Dota or more, or right. Or most of these female gamers uh, play uh, they, they, they play the the King of Glories. Right. Uh, the beginning of their mobile game history. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we, yes. Huh. Um, so uh, for the uh, uh, for the uh, so this is uh, the sociability of game. Right. Uh, that's uh, that you know in the King of Glory that uh, you, you need yeah. to uh, you need to use your microphone to talk with others in also in all the other mobile games. If right. you want to play well, you need to win the fight. You need to use your microphone to talk with others. Yeah, and, yeah, it makes, uh, sense. Talking, it makes sense. Uh, in uh, in react the information. Yeah. So yep. Uh, this uh, playing and communicating model uh, is uh, is well very accepted by the female. They want right. a female want to play game or uh, or want to share the uh, share their same hobby with their with a friend with uh, others yep. Yep. With their sister because of the social family. element which you talked about yes, sort of like person. groups. Mm -hmm. So right. this is the first the the first big contribution uh, from female uh, from the female gamers. Also the esports uh, uh, the the game producers. Uh, pay huge attention uh, during the design of the games. Right. The new, uh, recently, uh, uh, the new recently created esports titles. Uh, almost every, uh, almost every producers consider a lot for this function uh, for this uh, for the social sociability of the games. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. A, They need to consider uh, the 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 huge. Uh, consuming potential of the female right. gamers in in China. For the we have a we have a joke. It's about the uh, consumer pyramid. All right. We do right. yeah. We divided uh, different uh, group of consumers as a pyramid. Yeah. On the top level is a female. All right. And then uh, and then the uh, lower is the the kids, the children. All right. Then one more low and then lowers is the uh, elders right one level lower is the pets <laughs> and right. at the bottom at the bottom <laughs> is the male <laughs> yeah uh, so i don't know if if it is the same similar situation in europe or south, uh, in north america but this is a uh, true uh, description of what yeah, yeah yeah I, I i i don't know i don't have any yeah <laughs> i'm gonna look so, that up but so in, in China, the female, especially young female, right. are the biggest consumers in all industry, in all consuming industry, also esports. So right. uh, if it, so, if the esports producers want to earn more money, they need to right. consider a lot. The, the, they need to invest. They need to uh, learn the habits of this yeah. huge group. No, but it, it seems like, you know, based on like, you know, what you told me with King of Glory is that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they built uh, like, first of all, like, it seems like, and, and this is like, you know, very typical with games, right? It's like the community mm -hmm. that, that you build, you know, and, and that like, especially if you're going to make something, you know, popular, you need to create like a community around it and something like, you know, that you will invite your friends and, you know, the accessibility to have your friends you know there and i think like that's also like might be a huge factor when it, when you talk about mobile games because everyone has a mobile phone right yeah. but not everyone 
like we talked about cross like we haven't talked about it but like cross play right it's been an issue where you know say like a game like apex legends which haven't had a cross play until like they will release it this fall so like i couldn't play with my friends that i that i know have like playstation or pc because you know we can't yeah you only play against you know your xbox or your 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 console you take this hardware or console everywhere right. you, you, you are you're working or you're traveling yeah but that's, that's also from, a very good point you know like the easy accessibility and i think like that uh creates a lot of barriers for maybe you know also maybe the the female participation because they have their phone and you know okay they have maybe you know they're traveling distances and all this stuff and it makes them easier more easy to play and maybe they're sitting with their friends okay let's play this game you know it's easy accessible and it's 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 also easy to learn you know which i think is like a huge huge factor it doesn't take a lot of time to learn it um mm -hmm. Well, let's, but let's move on a little bit into like, you know, we're starting to wrap up like to like, you know, getting close here to the end of the podcast, but what, mm -hmm. what essentially can esport teams today do to start monetizing the fan side of the industry even more than it is today, you know, because I think like there's a lot of potential there, but it's not being, you know, fully, fully grasped or utilized yet. What, mm -hmm. what exactly can these, can these teams do? Mm -hmm. Well, we need to recognize this uh, esports industry is still developing. It's still developing For comparing sure. to, the, to the traditional sports industry. Yeah. There's, just, there's uh, a lot of areas that need to be uh, well developed. And I think for currently, uh, in, the, in the next five or ten years, right. for the esports team that want to monetize the fans, uh, uh, I believe uh, there's a one, uh, uh, there's there's an area that uh, they can consider in the short term is the localization, yep. right? It's a look, but you know, uh, for the traditional sports, we have the uh, localized emotion, right? right. Uh, I I I st um, I, I, study, uh, I learn in, in Madrid, and I know how the real, uh, how the Madrid fans support their Real Madrid team right. or uh, Atletico right. Madrid. And also the Barcelona citizens yep. of Barcelona, yep. uh, because these teams already existed more than one hundred years right. among their neighbor, among right. the neighbors. Yeah, the obvious year there's a Santiago Bernabeu stadium there. Yeah, there's a training base of the Real Madrid there. Uh, the 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 citizen can can see their their. Uh, their favorite football players on the street or on the bus right. or something right. like that. Because yeah. they get familiar with it. So that's the, uh, that's, that's, that's the origin of the localization for the traditional right. sports club. But for the eSports, for the eSports e club, they don't have this, uh, uh, this is their, their natural weakness. You right. Say the e yeah. eSports uh, come from the internet, come from the uh, yeah. visual. So they, right. uh, the localization, so they don't have their original roots. Right. That's mm -hmm. a good, that's so a good this, point. Yeah. So for the for this, uh, they, so they need to surpass this uh, natural weakness and develop their localization. But right. I know, as we know, the for for the in the recent years, three or five years, uh, some of the famous esports titles are already considered the localization as their. Uh, development strategy, for example, yeah. the League of Legends. Uh, from 2018, I, I believe it's 2018, the LPL, right. this LPL, the, the China League of Legends League, mm. uh, already uh, be, uh, already began to use the home away system. That means before right. the esports team play the game uh, on the internet, they don't have their they don't have their off court base. Or right, 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 right. Yeah. Or the stadium or arena to play, yeah. but after the league, uh, after the the producers, the Tencent introduced this uh, home away system. Some esports club, some LPL team, began to find their their hometown. Right, hometown. right. They moved to they moved to multiple biggest city in China, like Shanghai, like uh, like Beijing, like Xi'an, some big right. city in China. And create their home home base, right. so that yeah, they they believe that, that uh, after 
some year, maybe five years or 10 years, when the eSports fan, they, they believe that eSports fan can be the same with the traditional sports fan. They will have, the, uh, if they're a team, if an eSports title, an eSports yep. team, no, eSports club play five or 10 years in the home rounds, they will out, um, uh, slowly and slowly these, uh, the citizens of these cities, the gamers yep. of these cities, will be the fan of this club. They believe this is uh, this is uh, uh, this is a historic trend. I believe. Right. That's uh, that's also the East uh, the Eastport club managers believe. Yeah. Yep. yep. Also the the Overwatch League, they have a bigger strategy than the than the League of Legends. They have right. they want to use this uh, home and away system all world around. They want to create the uh, uh, home, uh, they want to use this system in America, in China, mm. in Korea, in, yeah. in Europe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we can, we can know that the localization is uh, uh, a generally accepted uh, strategy that used by some of right. the biggest developer is yeah. in the world and uh, but there is still some uh, risk risk uh, right. risk because we know um, I don't uh, I don't know quite well the the the, the habit or the behavior of the in esports fans in Europe or, or North, South, uh, North America quite well because I yep. just yeah, yeah. Know, Two years there, but in China, I can understand quite well. Yep. In China, uh, until now, most esports team don't have fans, and that's uh, uh, right. That's it. This is uh, they don't have team fans. Right. Uh, most right. of them are players fans. Right. So, uh, for example, the Cristiano Ronaldo playing in Real Madrid. And some uh, most uh, Cristiano Cristiano Ronaldo fans will become Real Madrid fans, and when right, yeah, very Madrid, very typical. This group of fans also will will leave. But right. during this process, because Ronaldo or, uh, played in Real Madrid many years, so during right. this year, some uh, some uh, Ronaldo fans before may stay, may keep being the Real Madrid fan even mm. after. Uh, that That's Cristiano true. Ronaldo need to move to Juventus, but this situation is quite rare in esports right now. Yeah. For, uh, for for esports fans, they support the team uh, mainly because their favorite players play in this club. And right. when the player move to another club, yeah, uh, they support uh, you know, just the player. The, Support just well. the awesome, awesome yeah. So one of the biggest problem and one of the biggest risks is for the esports club is how to keep this keep these fans right. uh, taken by the by the players stay here and don't leave with their their favorite with and don't leave and don't leave in with their players in the future. Right. But but I think yeah. I think I think the issue here though might be and I'm I'm seeing this a lot in the U.S. too is that you know like the esport players are like the ones that joins the team teams in general like they're streamers right they're like they 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 build up their own fan base because of who they are and like you know their stream or whatever they they do right and then they get uh you know into like whatever team it might be you know and play that game that they were playing on stream for like say like you know 300 4000 like 300 or like up to like several several thousand people every every mm -hmm. time and and you know they build their own fan base but i think a lesson here for like the teams the way i see in streams and like and, and i'm not gonna lie I, I watch i watch some some streams here and there you know on twitch and everything and, and 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 stuff like that and and i think it's interesting where how can you know the the teams say like tsm which is a pretty big team in in the u.s uh mm -hmm. you know in in general uh, how can they, you know, showcase even more, like, besides, like, the banners and, like, you know, the, the thing in the description that said, okay, yeah, I play for TSM and, like, I have my branding with them. But what can they do to say, like, oh, I'm a TSM, like, this is my team, like, promote the team even mm -hmm. more so, like, their community gets like, get, become a fan of TSM and not just the player, as you said, because I think that's, 
the gap is that they haven't done that yet enough where mm -hmm. yes they have like the oh i play for 100 teams or i play for tsm or you know face or whatever it is but there's no more like yeah but what is 100 teams show me something like that what is 100 teams about what is tsm about that i'm like oh that's an organization i want to support that's a team i want to support not just you know that player but the team and i think that's a really good uh, and a lot of potential but i think that's where the business opportunities and the sport management students and professionals can come in and make an impact you know and can come and showcase how can we make the esport team become professional but as you said you got to keep in mind they're still young there's a lot of stuff you know to think think about and i think i think with that uh shang i think it's it's good to like wrap up a little bit here with with uh you know what kind of tips do you have you know for for students you know and like mm -hmm. sport management students so forth that that wants to work in the esport industry like where mm -hmm. and how should they start their journey because it doesn't seem like it's a very you know if you're not like familiar enough with the esport industry like where do you where do you kind of like start you know to get your foot in the door and try to like oh i want to want to be part of esport industry yeah in China, I was uh, uh, I began this work, uh, I began this job uh, three months ago, but I already have multiple multiple students and their their and their parents asked me how to how to enter in esports industry industry because right. their their children their children their kids they, they like to play they like to play games and they want right. to be working in in esports industry in the future, yeah. but their parents don't know, understand don't don't know this industry quite well so they yeah. don't know how to, how to enter if they uh, if they uh, uh, if working in esports industry can be a can be a, a stable job in the future they have right. this question yeah for them i have some recommend for this kind of parents or these students who want to work in esports industry in the future i have some recommendations and the first one is love your current study and your current job yeah. Right. Personal experience, all you learn in the school and the, and your experience during the practice or during your current job will be a good treasure in the future. Uh, maybe you don't know that for me, and now I'm I begin my career in esports industry from 31 years old. So yeah, yeah. This, from 22 years old when I graduated from the university until 30 years old, what was I? What did I do? Yeah, I do multiple job uh, list here. First, I did uh, commercial opportunity investigators, right? Interpreters, bidding agent, project manager, uh, invited commentator and journalist for the sport magazine for sports magazine. Yeah, and but I believe every piece of this study and working experience is a puzzle for my current job. Absolutely, why? Hundred percent. Yeah, first, first commercial opportunity investigator that helped me. And then let me practice how to find, how to search information faster and uh, more accurate in, on the right. internet. Right. And the interpreter uh, make, make me, uh, can make me speak to other persons from, from the other countries more fluently. Yeah? Right. And now I can speak Spanish and English. English is my second language, although, although not quite so fluent, still can talk with yeah. others. It works, it works very yeah. well. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then, bidding agent, bidding agent of the construction project right now. Uh, so uh, for uh, this uh, this experience helped me right now. Uh, let me know how to write a project or a program or plan uh, that can get the attention from the officials or from the investigators. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you want to organize an esports event, how to write the plan that can attract. Right. The, no. to attract the investigators and the project manager of course uh, i understand how to uh, lead how to manage a group of persons yep. and then invite commentator and journalists for the sports magazines right and so i can write some articles i can yeah. write uh, i can write Content. twitters quite well Content. I can, that's really the important. attention of the of the viewers yep. so each piece of this my personal working experience is a treasure for me for the current job. I, I believe sure. in the future, this experience will have been a lot. This is the first reason.
and yep. this uh, first recommendation. Love your current study and your current job. Absolutely. And second, focus on, uh, if you want to enter in esports industry, focus on one concrete point or area. You know, right. esports industry is similar with children's sports industry. Is children's sports industry is a mixture of multiple industry. Listen, that means if you enter in sports industry, you can be there are multiple choice, uh, hundreds yeah. of choice. Be a coach, you can be a manager, you can be a psychologist, you can be a lawyer, uh, you right. can be a uh, an agent. Yeah, that's the same. That's the same in the future for the esports industry. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, just select one one concrete point that you are uh, that you that you like. Like what would be your focus, sort of? Or you are good at? Yeah. And then keep practicing, keep focus on on the information of this area, and right. get get preparation during in the university. And yep. when you graduate, oh, you can try it. This is okay. the second recommendation, and third recommendation is. Um, uh, try all the famous esports titles in the market. They say, yeah. You don't need to be high level gamers, yeah, but yeah, at but, least but understand, understand how to play, right? right? Yeah. And that's easy to understand, right? Uh, and the last one, the last recommendation is uh, besides playing the games, playing the esports titles, right. don't always be at home. Right? <laughs> yeah. Working in esports industry, uh, you, it's inevitable that you will face constantly interpersonal relationships and communication. Because right. ooh, although, in, uh, although for game or esports, we communicate by the internet or yeah. um, from computer to computer, but if, if working in esports industry, uh, organizing esports again, having uh, off court forum or, right. have, uh, or, or have some festivals, you need to contact with the person in real life. So yep. don't stay at home. Make more friends and yeah. open your open your mind. Yeah, your mind. Uh, it's much easier when you try to uh, when you finally decide. To, okay, I will enter in the esports industry. So the four main reason and uh, the four main recommendation for all the students who want to work in the future in the esports industry. Uh, just my personal opinion. The same. <laughs> I say. No, but the, hope you can appreciate it. Shane, there's some re that's some really good advice. I think you know you you put down some really key things, and I think as well like whatever you do, it's esports or like in normal sports. So like you, you you need to know you know the industry well, and you know whether that's working for football, whether that's working for like you know esports or like say like oh I want to work with like League of Legends or Kings of Glory, then mm -hmm. understand this game you know and try to get get the best insights that you can and and learn you know try try different different things explore you know what makes sense for you and it's okay also changing you know that okay yeah no i want to be like a coach in esports but then you know maybe that's not for me after all and then you change you know maybe you want to do marketing or or sales or what it might be it's it's going to be a lot of opportunities uh and shane and with that i would just like to thank you so much you know for taking the time for being part of the podcast it's been a pleasure having you here learning more about the e east asia sport esports industry learning more about like an esports fan, what it's all about. I think a lot of us that are listening to this, uh, you know, we'll learn a lot about, you know, the esport industry and there's still a lot to scratch. So, you know, it will be interesting to see where we can take from that. And uh, once again, to everyone that is listening, thanks, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to sign up for the Sporting Global Summit that are coming your way. So the link is in bio. And with every video podcast that we do, we always finish with which means I see, we see you later in Norwegian. <laughs>